But I mean, then Saudi as a country generally does get labelled as a place where, um, you know, is kind of not progressive when it comes to women's rights. But if it's had this kind of history where they, I don't know how long this period was for that w women were prevented from education, because it, you just think to yourself, like, as you know, technically, you know, it, as in in the eyes of the Muslim, of the world in general, even whether it's Muslim or non-Muslim, Saudi Arabia is the home of Islam. Okay. And mm -hmm. that's the place where everybody kind of looks to that, oh, that anything, whatever they're doing, that's what Islam is. So yeah. to, to say, to, to knowing that they've had this in the culture, that there was a period where girls were not allowed to be educated, you know, it's quite kind of enlightening because obviously this is where some of these ideas um, of, uh, you know, misogyny and, you know, lack of female rights and things like that is going to come from because they've had the period or I mean where did that come in like why did they have I mean why did I they ever have that in the culture that, you, that girls mind. weren't allowed to education yeah I think it's important to keep in mind the cultural context though because like back then education in general was not very well formalized to begin with hmm. for boys or girls and most girls were privately taught how to read and write and whatever kind of domestic things um and like the concept of a public school system itself had not been completely formalized hmm. so it's not like oh the boys had this amazing education system and girls didn't it was just that like an option existed for boys that didn't exist for girls at that time and then it was introduced for girls um and it's really important to note actually that despite um the bad rap that saudi has in many ways that it actually deserves because like they're screwed up in, in many ways mm -hmm. um but when it comes to education for women in not just in saudi but in the surrounding like Khadiji gulf countries uh women are extremely highly educated like they've yes. got like multiple degrees they have great careers and stuff too um i think every saudi woman i've met has had like bare minimum like a master's degree in at least one topic yeah um i've had an amazing quran teacher uh sheikha sumaya who she had her islamic studies degree uh, she was a hafilah um she taught quran and she had she was living in canada for a while uh and then in malaysia pursuing her master's and her PhD in secular studies. So, and she is not, you know, an anomaly by any means. Like they are extremely well educated. Definitely. I mean, I can, I can, uh, I can agree with you because I've had similar experience here. Whenever I've met women from those countries, they're always more educated than everybody else that I know. Like it's something that's, that's why I was so shocked to like, you know, notice that in the documentary. But, um, and I think unfortunately, like the truth of what like, you know the situation how things are is not what people seem to recognize and I don't know like maybe it's partly to do with the feminists themselves who come from some of these countries they kind of propagate this idea that the women in those countries are having really the hardest lives and the hardest time and they're you know they yeah really you've are got being people oppressed. like Muna al Tahawi who is notorious for just like making a BS and all kinds of nonsense like I have read so many books you know allegedly by women who lived in Saudi and who you know just perpetuate this idea that it's a dank dark place that has nothing I'm like y'all don't understand how spoiled Saudi women are exactly they are sitting there with like drivers and chauffeurs and nannies and often living the lap of luxury and I mean again don't get me wrong there's a lot of issues there there are a lot of challenges um but they're not unique in the sense that they have certain issues I mean there are plenty of other Muslim countries with different issues there are secular countries with way worse issues exactly. in many many ways so it's it's not like oh this misogyny is unique to Saudi or to certain types of Muslim countries. I'm like, no, it exists everywhere. It just manifests in different forms. It's, essentially, it's jahiliya. And this is something that I, um, that Sheikh Akram Nadwi uh, articulates really well, that whenever you see the oppression of women and injustice against women, it is simply jahiliya, whether or not it's justified with deen or not. And of course, Islam and Allah never allow uh, oppression. Like Allah has said, he's, uh, he's, forbidden oppression for himself and he has forbidden it for us so it doesn't matter how many ayats or hadith somebody quotes they, if they are oppressing women it's oppression of women and that's haram Zulm is uh oppression in this world will come as a darkness on the day of judgment mm -hmm. um and those who twist the words of allah and his messenger will be punished for it 